Easton, after coming so close last season, what's it mean to you to be an OHL champion this year? Yeah, uh, it means a lot to me and, uh, you know, everyone on our team. Uh, it's a great feeling. Uh, you know, I really love the team this year. Really proud of those boys in that room and everyone, you know, who's helped us get here. Uh, it's a great feeling. And uh, again, I woke up today a champion, so I got my hat on. Probably won't take this off for a bit. And uh, like I said, just an unreal feeling for all of us. What made it a special group this year? Uh, just how tight we were. We really, you know, found a way to come together. Uh, everyone wanted to win. Everyone wanted to play for each other. The guy next to you, uh, you know, everyone blocked shots. We were all, uh, you know, really positive on the bench. Just little stuff like that goes a long way to winning a championship. And I felt like that really helped us this year. I know you were you were focused on becoming more of a leader this year. How do you feel like you grew into that role? Yeah, I felt like I did a good job of that. Uh, obviously, you know, I got a lot of minutes out there playing every situation. So on and off the ice, I felt like, you know, I led this team pretty well. And, you know, just being positive on and off the ice. You know, we had, uh, you know, we had a lot of, we didn't even have a captain this year. We just had a lot of good leaders. Everyone, you know, we had a couple, I think we had like four A's and uh, even people without letters on their jersey still led. And uh, that's what really helped our team this year really be, be successful. Boy, what, what a run in the playoffs for you. In what ways do you feel like you elevated in the playoffs? Yeah, I felt like I had a slow start there. Uh, I went with like six games without scoring uh, in between the Flint and uh, Kitchener series there. So uh, that just shows the depth of our team, uh, how many people we can have to score. And I felt like I really upped my game there in the Western Conference Finals and then in the, you know, OHL Finals. I love playing, you know, on the big stage, obviously, TSN, all the cameras, all that. I, I love that stuff. You know, most people would be like, oh, do you like that, Easton? Do you like it? Like, what do you think about it? I love it personally. I love, you know cameras on you you know everyone's watching it really you know shows you know when you know when the lights are on you how big you are and um you know how mature you are on and off the ice i feel like it helps a lot you know get ready for the next jump to the next level so i felt like that helped me a lot and i felt like i just really found my game there in the finals and like i said you can't do it without your teammates no you, i was playing center wing on different lines each and every night you know you're killing penalties with different guys you're on the power play with different guys like uh, it just really helps you know that i have a great team to you know support me each and every night we know you like the bright lights. Uh, and I remember talking to you in November and you, you were saying, you know, I don't even mind the haters. Like they fire me up. Like I don't mind seeing negative stuff because that just gets me going. Things went really well for you this year. Were, were there a lot of doubters? Like, could you find that stuff this year? Yeah, actually, I kind of was talking about that the other day with my billet dad. Like, obviously, you know, there's a lot of, you know, haters still. Like there's still a couple out there, you know, they find a way to hate on you. And it's funny, but uh, there's still, there's a lot of lovers now more than there were last year that's for sure but uh yeah uh haters are gonna hate it is what it is and you know there's gonna be people that love you too which is great so uh either way you just gotta keep working and you know staying positive and just be a kid at the end of the day you mentioned that six game kind of drought in the playoffs how did you work your way through that just doing a lot of video with Rick Stedman, my uh, assistant coach there, the penalty kill coach. You know, we did a lot of video, just, you know, simpler, simplifying my game, stops and starts, you know, finishing more checks. And obviously the puck's not always going to bounce your way. So uh, I feel like if you simplify your game throughout the game, uh, good things will come. And just getting pucks deep, like I said, uh, stop and starts and throwing pucks on net. You never know what can go in. And uh, eventually they just started coming in. They just, as soon as you get one, they just kept coming. Like uh, I didn't score for a bit. And then uh, Saginaw there scored with like a minute left and it was off like one of their guys uh skates and in. so those are the balances you get sometimes sometimes you don't and I got them there and then they just kept going in from there you mentioned Sagan I wanted to ask you about a moment in that series uh game six you open the scoring shorthanded goal and then you kind of you're playing to the crowd there you're kind of staring down the fans and that's not the first time I'd seen you do that it wasn't the last time like what inspires that what's going through you at that moment yeah, I think it's just great. Uh, obviously, um, I did that in uh, Flint, too. People thought I was yelling at the fans, but I was actually yelling at my family that were just a couple rows up. I was like, let's go. I was just looking at my dad and my mom, my grandparents, my sister. So that was cool. And then, yeah, it happened in Saginaw. And then, obviously, in Oshawa the other night, too. I just like that, Sally. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, you know, you kind of just stare down the fans, and I think it just gets the boys going. And, uh, yeah, I felt pretty good, too, after that shot. So uh, it's just pretty funny, I think, to look back at it was a nice shot. Uh, so I uh, spent some time around you at the World Juniors, and I know how proud you were to wear the the Maple Leaf as an 18 year old at that event. But I also know it must have been pretty tough to uh, to to go out home after the quarterfinal. So how did the World Juniors? What, what did you take away from that experience this year? 
Yeah, it's the same kind of feeling as last year losing the OHL finals. It's just heartbreaking, really. Like, no other way to say it. Uh, you know, you come all this way and you just end up a bit short. And I really felt like we had a great team there in the World Juniors and just an unlucky bounce at the end there off a stick. I like, can't do anything about that. So I felt like that even drove me and, you know, Bonker a bit more this year to, you know, really win. And that drives you a bit more. So, like I said, just a heartbreaking feeling. And you never want to feel that, you know, with whatever team you play for. And everyone will feel the same way. So we just really came out here in the OHL finals with our foot on the pedal. And I felt like we never took it off. Well, you'll see a bunch of your uh, World Junior teammates at the Memorial Cup, including Denton Matejchuk, who is the MVP of the WHL playoffs. So you'll be going up against him when you face Moose Jaw. What stands out about Matejchuk? Yeah, he's a great player. Uh, I noticed right from the day I met him there, you know, he's a leader too on and off the ice. Uh, he's he's really uh, he's really dynamic back there. You know, I, I feel like he kind of plays a bit like Morgan Riley, honestly. You know, he's a really, you know, sounded uh, well 200-foot player, can run a power play, good in the D zone. Uh, but yeah, he, he's a heck of a player, like you said, and uh, I'm really excited to play against them. I'll probably see him out on the ice a lot. And he'll probably be, you know, against the, you know, our line a lot. So uh, it'll be cool. It'll be a great experience for everyone. Uh, I I te texted uh, Savoy. I roomed with him in Sweden a bit, and then I've been close with Jager since U18. So or U7, U16s there. So or no, 17s, U17s. Uh, and so I texted both of them, said congrats, and we're all pumped to see each other. But at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. So uh, we can be friends off the ice, but when it comes on the ice, uh, we're ready to go. What's your secret to dealing with pressure? Because there's so much, so many eyes on you, and you just you don't seem to slow down here. Yeah, uh, I think just living the moment uh, helps me a lot. You know, kind of just you know, obviously, like I said, I know people are going to hate, I know people are going to love you. So either way. When, you know, when you're on a TSN game or not, you play the same way, you show up for the rink the same way, and that helps a lot. And obviously, uh, Mintz helps me out a lot. He, you know, he'll text me here and there. I've been texting him a lot, actually. He, he texts me, congrats, and he was watching the game. He's always watching us, and I'm watching, you know, I don't got the package for the WHL, but I was watching him on, like, the app and stuff. And, you know, he had a great playoff run. And, yeah, we, we text a lot, and he's helped me out a lot, obviously having, you know, some experience in the NHL and dealing with it a bit a year before me. What did you think of his celebration after his overtime winner in game five there, the whole? Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Wes Clark texted me too and loved that uh, celebration too. And yeah, that's another guy, Wes Clark. You know, he, he's been here for me since he drafted me and, or, you know, had a part in drafting me. And uh, it just mean a lot that he's always, you know, there for me. I obviously had ups and downs throughout the year and he was still texting me, sending me motivational stuff and helping me out. And that little stuff goes a long way for me.